first close encounter really that, that I, I remember when when I grew up in the west coast of Scotland. There's lots of stuff around, but I remember being completely blown away when I went out to a seabird colony off the off the west coast to a little island that's part of the the Treshnish archipelago. It's a phenomenally beautiful place, but there there's um, thousands of of puffins and there's guillemots and there was razorbills and um, and gulls and a whole range of different wildlife. And I was sort of bowled over by um, that abundance of, of life in one place. And I think particularly because it was on my doorstep, it was it was in Scotland. I didn't realise that you could have those kind of wildlife encounters um, in in this country. I thought you had to travel to exotic places like India or Africa or South America. But no, there's, there's amazing wildlife all, all around the world. You've just got to look for it and find it. The most fascinating, I think, was when I spent time up in the Arctic with um, the, the family of wolves. That was, um, I was just, it, it, was, it was very easy in, in many ways. It was really difficult to get there, logistically very hard, but it was very easy because every single hour of every single day, almost, uh, we had the wolves right in front of us. And it was fascinating to be so close to them uh, and be able to observe their Family, family life and the sort of group dynamics, um, and sort of not actually interfere with them at all, and not, not affect their their behaviour. I suppose mm, filming with this silverback gorilla in the Democratic Republic of Congo. That was, sort of, I wasn't scared generally of him and of Chimanuka, who was our main male character, but when he charged, when he was sort of throwing his weight around, that was very, very intimidating. And at the early, it was always intimidating, but at the early stages it was, it was scary because you've got this enormous, enormous um, silverback crashing towards you, beating his chest and screaming and coming as close as I am to you. Um, so yeah, that was a, yeah, definitely nerve wracking. Definitely filming polar bears in the, um, in the Arctic. Again, sort of a real logistic challenge. Um, we were following a, an individual, um, Lyra, who had a satellite collar. So in theory, we should be able to find out every whenever we wanted, every hour of every day. But the technology, as technology sort of does, sort of was, was a little bit kind of um, gremlin filled and we really struggled in that environment to, to find her. Um, so pretty much everything that we shot of Lyra up there in Svalbard made it into the, into the series. Um, you know, you could, it's so easy to, to lose a polar bear because they're f phenomenally, um, uh, versatile when it comes to making their way around the Arctic. They can swim through sea ice, they can cross over glaciers, they can climb mountains, they can, you know, go to places that people can't. So it was a real a real challenge trying to keep up with her and, and tell tell the story of her and her cubs. Maybe the wolves, um I think there's sort of there's something there's something about wolf family life that's very similar to our own, as different as we are as uh, a species. Wolves are, um, they have very strong families. They're sort of driven um, by their desire to keep their families together and keep them safe. So they're very much a, a community, a little clan. And I think once you see that there's sacrifice that, that, that goes on, that older members of this family will sacrifice um, uh, certain things like go without food to give that food to the younger more vulnerable members of the of the family um, yeah I think they weren't connected to, to me although they were very very interested in me and they seemed to like being around and being very close so this is a family of wild wolves and some of them fully grown adult wolves came up and sort of sniffed my Wellington boot so as close as you really want to be to a wild animal <laughs>